To say that the 2025 Subaru Forester is all new would be stating the obvious, not only in regards to the exterior design, but also the interior technology and layout that brings a futuristic style and feel that was definitely lacking last generation. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sport Trim, and some of you are going to be wondering, what is the Sport Trim? Why should I go with this model over a premium? Now I personally think the premium is the go-to. I think that is the best value overall for a vehicle just over $30,000 because of what it's offering. But the Sport is quite compelling and for 2025 is most certainly more interesting and sportier looking than the last generation Sport and that's why I am here. We're going to take a deep dive into the 2025 Subaru Forester Sport, check out the exterior, the interior, take it out for a very quick test drive and see why if you are looking for a fun daily driver that is practical, efficient and affordable, then maybe going with the Forester Sport might be a great choice. Now before we get started, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for letting me come down here to check out the Forester Sport. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. Now one thing I do want to point out here with Subaru Wakefield is that they're all about the community. And this month they're accepting donations for school supplies for the Galvin Middle School. So if you do live in the Boston area and you are local and you want to give to a good cause, Debbie, come on down, drop off some folders, pencils or pens, and you'll be helping a lot of good kids out. So as always, let's begin with pricing. The model with today is the Sport, coming in with a starting cost of just under $34,500. It will sit between the Premium and Limited in the lineup. And aside from more standard equipment that you're not gonna find on the Premium or it would be optional on the Premium, the major difference is the exterior design and the accents and cosmetic features that makes up this particular trim. So starting up front, you are gonna find bronze accents for the lower portion of the front bumper. But one thing that does really set this vehicle apart, aside from the bronze accents, is the gloss black grille design that gives you a nice lower profile appearance on our model today, and you're not gonna find that on the premium. Now you are gonna have steering responsive LED headlights and LED fog lights, giving you better visibility late at night or in adverse weather conditions. Then as you make your way over to the side profile, you're gonna find your 19 inch alloy wheels in a bronze finish. And this is actually rather bold for Subaru. They don't typically do this with their models, but I think Subaru is trying to be a bit more adventurous and sporty for 2025 and moving forward. And I have to say, even with the 19 inch alloy wheels, Ride quality really wasn't that bad. So if you're looking for a family friendly vehicle that also has um, a minimal amount of road noise, you're gonna like these 19 inch alloy wheels. Also, you're gonna find bronze accents for the lower portion of the side profile, again, complementing the other bronze accents found throughout the exterior. Then separating the Sport from the Premium is the gloss black side mirror caps that matches the gloss black grille. What isn't different though is that you will have turn signal indicators. They are heated, they're power adjustable and folding. However, standard for the Sport is that you will have blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert, whereas that is an option on the Premium. Now, typically what wouldn't be noteworthy is the symmetrical all-wheel drive badge. However, that also does have bronze accents. Then as you make your way around the back, Nothing too different here in regards to the fact that the taillights are the same, the accents are mostly the same. However, you get the bronze accents for the lower portion of the rear bumper and for the sport trim that also is in bronze as well. So stepping inside the Forester Sport, there is some key differences and features that really sets this trim apart from the rest of the lineup but also why it might be worth spending a little extra over the premium. You're first gonna be drawn in by the StarTex water repellent upholstery, which is gonna be very easy to clean if you do live an active lifestyle or you have pets that track in dirt and snow throughout the year. I find this fabric to be very high quality and rather premium, comparing it to leatherette upholstery as found in Rivals. This is gonna be easy to clean, but also because Subaru reshaped these seats for 2025, there's a lot more support and bolstering than what you found last year. And also comparing this to say what you're gonna find in an Onyx Edition Outback, I find these seats to really hug you and shape around you, providing a very comfortable driving experience on a weekday commute. But just like with the premium, the driver's side is power adjustable with lumbar support, whereas the passenger will have to manually find their ideal seating position. Other key differences will be the paddle shifters on the steering wheel, which does simulate an eight-speed automatic transmission. So if you are somebody who wants to have a bit more fun when you are on the winding back roads in the mountains, or maybe you're camping and skiing and snowboarding through the summer and winter, and you just find a great road, 
you can just put it in a manual mode and you can upshift and downshift as you please. Now, of course, this isn't a dynamic or a performance oriented crossover. So keep all of that in mind. It's not going to be like a BMW X5M. However, it is going to give you a lot of driving pleasure for sure. And just like with the exterior, you will have bronze accents for the interior and dashboard. Also, of course, the seats and the steering wheel giving you bronze stitching that just adds a nice little touch on this model. And we see that for the Onyx Edition and Wilderness trims throughout the lineup where Subaru does make their special trims feel a bit more unique compared to other trims in the lineup. Outside of that though, there's not too much different for the interior unless we wanna talk about the optional 24 package, which we do have equipped on our model today. That will give us reverse automatic braking, but also more importantly, rear backup sensors. So if you want extra safety, go with this package. You'll also receive the Harman Kardon premium audio system. So if you are somebody who likes listening to music, this will be a better choice than the standard stereo system that you're going to find on the premium and, of course, a sport without this package. And lastly, will be the power liftgate, which is available on the premium, and I would definitely go with that for the sport. This package is only $1,700, so at around $36,000 for this model, it is pretty well equipped. Just like with the premium, you will have a panoramic moonroof bringing in a lot of natural light to the interior and also really brightens up the cabin and makes it look a bit bigger than it is in reality. And of course, with the technology, nothing different at all. You're still gonna have your analog gauges and a small information display in the center. And by using the buttons on the steering wheel, you can scroll through a variety of information such as your time, your outside temperature, your digital speedometer, your what radio station you're listening to, your tire pressure monitoring system, and of course your fuel range. And briefly taking a look at the infotainment system as you're gonna find in all trims for 2025. You'll have an 11.6 inch touchscreen, but for the premium trim and above, you'll have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android compatibility. We also have a wireless phone charging pad, a USB-C and USB input. Also, of course, dual zone climate control. But one feature that is embedded on this 11.6 inch touchscreen that does go a long way if you are somebody who does live more of an active lifestyle, you will have dual function X mode, giving you hill descent control, but also the ability to go through deep snow and mud. And that is something I think a lot of Subaru owners are looking for, especially if you are somebody who does encounter winter road conditions throughout the year, or you do go on those off-road adventures. As we talked about with the premium, you will have valet mode as well. So you just put in a pin code, and that way when you are at a fancy restaurant or a hotel, the valet won't be driving off and speeding away in your vehicle. And then quickly taking a look at the second row seating area, nothing different at all compared to the premium in regards to interior space and overall dimensions, but also features as well, aside from the fact that we still have the StarTex water repellent upholstery, which for the second row does feel rather nice. And just like we saw up front, Subaru did add some bolstering to the second row, so that way you're not swinging around too much on a winding road. But for passengers back here, they will have two center mounted air vents, which is perfect on a nice warm day like today. So that way everyone can be cool, but also during the winter, people can be warm as well. You're gonna find a USB-C and USB input and then two unlabeled buttons, which would be for your heated outboard seats that does not come available for the sport or of course the premium, but you can't find that on higher trims. And then to round out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. And then as you make your way around to the back, of course, since so we had the optional 24 package equipped on our model, we do get the power lift gate and you're gonna find a rear cargo cover. Now, when it comes to cargo space, nothing different at all for the sport compared to the premium. So you're still getting the great versatility and overall practicality. And beneath the floor mat, you are gonna find a spare tire. So if you encounter flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And then as always, when you do have your power lift gate, your button can be found right here and it will close automatically. And lastly, you receive a 2.5 liter boxer four cylinder engine producing 180 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. And as always, it is paired with the CVT and super symmetrical all wheel drive does come standard. For 2025, Subaru did retune this engine to give you better low end torque when entering highways and passing slower drivers. So you're gonna notice this engine is a bit more potent and a bit more athletic than it was in the past. On top of that, Subaru revised the chassis, siphoning it by 10%, giving you better handling and cornering ability when you are on the back roads or you're in the mountain roads and you're skiing and snowboarding during the winter or you're camping during the summer. 
the Forester 4 2025 is a lot more enjoyable than it was in the past. You're going to notice that with the Sport, it is more athletic. It is more dynamic, even though on paper, it doesn't really show that in any way, shape, or form. But you don't judge a book by its cover, especially for 2025 with the Forester. I do think that going with the Sport, you are going to have a bit more of those creature comforts, especially with the StarTex water resistant fabric upholstery. Then, of course, as we already talked about, since we checked out the interior, you do get the paddle shifters and thankfully with this CVT that Subaru has utilized for the past few years but also has been retuning over the past few years as well it's very enjoyable there's no droning you don't deal with that rubber band effect and that is compounded with the sport since you do have the ability to rotate the gears yourself and this CVT does mimic an 8-speed automatic transmission. Now obviously this 8-speed automatic isn't going to be comparable to a ZF 8-speed or a dual clutch in any way, but for a daily driver and family hauler, this is actually going to be quite compelling and fun. And in the past with the Forester, I would say there was nothing necessarily remarkable about this vehicle. Whereas now in 2025, you do have the nice dynamic looks with the sport trim, but also the changes that they have made to the chassis, to the platform, even the interior as well with the technology and just the way this vehicle feels on the roadways. It feels much more substantial. They also address the amount of road noise that enters the cabin. This just has a very nice upscale feel that for a vehicle under $40,000, does feel relatively upscale. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough for the 2025 Subaru Forester Sport. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.